Go into the cover, Terra Grunt to Terra Space Migration Concepts. This should help you ever consider a migration in Terra Space. So this question came up in the community forums. Some person wanted to know, is it possible to migrate from Terra Grunt to Terra Space and keep the same state file? I thought this was a very interesting question because they were essentially asking, can I run Terra Grunt apply and run Terra Space up or Terraform apply, which is essentially the same thing, and have it show no differences? Because if you could do that, that means you don't have to move the state file. You just keep it in place and basically test incrementally. Okay, so the answer to this is yes, you can do this, but it's key to understand some essential differences between the way Terraform and Terragram works. And notice, I didn't mention anything about TerraSpace because this all has to do with actually HCL. So Terraform has native HCL, they invented the language, and Terragram actually added a custom HCL syntax on top of the native HCL. Now there are some pros and cons with this, we won't go there, okay? But the HCL is different. So I wanna point out right here, the module keyword and the Terraform keyword, they're both different ways to reuse a module, okay? On the native HCL Terraform side, you go module pet and then you source in a repo and that's essentially source in that reusable component, okay? For the Terragrunt side, they use the Terraform keyword, which is also a keyword in Terraform land, but it's actually different. It's a custom version of that, that basically source in also a module from a repo. It sounds very similar what they do, right? But they actually work quite differently. So with the Terragrant HCL, there's a Terraform keyword and then there's a source. And what it does is, is as if the source code was copied and pasted directly into that folder. So it's as if you wrote main.tf in that same folder. So what that results is this resource name right here, random pet dot pet one. Okay, that's exactly what you expect because that's what the resource name is called, okay? What Terraform is different. You have module pet here, okay? And that actually gets prepended in front of the resource name. So module pet and then random pet dot one. So I just really want to emphasize the key difference here. And you can see this in red here. On the native HCL side, you see module.pet in red. That doesn't exist on the Terragram side. It's as if the code was copy and paste in. This is what happens when you use the module keyword, okay? So why is that so important? Because there's consequences. Like if the naming is different, then the state file is gonna be different no matter what. You can't use the same state file because the name is different. So the key is you can't use the Terraform module keyword because that's not, it just doesn't work the same way. It adds that extra prepended path, okay? But this is actually not a big problem at all in TerraSpace because TerraSpace allows you to deploy actually the module directly as a stack. So you just basically mimic what TerraGrunt has done, okay? By deploying the source code as if it was copy and pasted in. So I'll explain a little bit more. So first, there's the different project structures. So on the uh, left-hand side there, you see the TerraSpace project structure. You have this concept of apps and stacks, okay? So there's EC2 stack and S3 stack with main.tf, okay? And this is a config Terraform folder with your backend TF and provider.tf. Well, the way TerraSpace works is it, it takes the config Terraform uh, folder files and it merges in with whatever your stack you're deploying at the time, so EC2 or S3 in this case. The way TerraGrunt works is you have a bunch of TerraGrunt Grunt HCL files which then sources in the common files or the common uh, modules from repos. And so the, all the configuration basically exists in these Terragrant HCL files. And the way it works is it goes up basically the director tree, then pulls in additional configurations at the top level file here, and then merges all those configurations together, and then deploys that module kind of directly, okay? So that's just kind of the way these things work. They're just completely different, okay? Now, the way TerraSpace works is again, it builds the folders from app stacks and combines it with the uh, files in config Terraform. And then it CDs in that folder. And then guess what? It's pure native Terraform at this point. Terraform, net Terraform, apply. There's no custom HCL logic at all, okay? So explain that's kind of uh, useful because remember, Terragrunt will copy basically the files from this repo when you use this uh, keyword Terraform source here into a folder in the recurrent folder, right? So what you literally have to do is copy that source code into app stacks and a folder, a demo folder in this case. And then you can deploy it exactly the same way and guess what, it's gonna keep the same resource ID, okay? So we're just mimicking basically Terragrunt behavior. And because of that, then you're gonna be able to use the same state file. Okay, so that's pretty much the key to keeping the same state file. You have to make sure that you keep the same resource name by not using the module keyword. It's, it's gonna create a different basically ID, okay? That's the same key and then basically you use the same state file. I want to note, you do have to configure backend TF to match. You want to match the bucket names and everything, the keys and everything. And once you do that, yeah, you're going to see no differences at all. Okay? Okay. And I also want to say that some people might, might, think, might, might be thinking, well, all my codes and all these separate repos already. I don't want to copy and paste everything in now. It's going to take a lot of time. Well, TerraSpace has an actually additional concept called TerraFile, 
where you define your modules actually in a centralized location, one file. You run something called TerraSpace Bundle, and then it actually downloads all the, all the modules into the repo, okay? And then it actually locks it too. So you basically centrally manage all your Terraform modules in a central location, and you manage with a Terra file lock file, okay? So this is how you do it. You just add this line to uh, your Terra file. You specify the module name. You spe specify the GitHub repo. You specify export to, and then you run Terra space bundle, then it's gonna download all your modules in, and then you can run Terra space up, and you, you should be able to see no differences at all, okay? So that is pretty much the key to migrating from Terra Grunt to Terra space and keeping the same state file. Just the key is you don't wanna use the module keyword, and you have to understand that Terra Grunt's behavior is to copy and paste the source code into the, that current working directory. In this video, I didn't actually go through the migration process. I'll cover that in another, in another video, but I just wanna explain the concepts that you need to know and the key is essentially, again, you just don't want to use the module keyword. Then you're going to be able to use the same state file. Hopefully that was helpful. Cheers.